Hello, my sweet sugar bears and britches. Welcome to another episode of... I missed... I stopped, I forgot to say bushes. Let's try that again. Hello, my sweet sugar bushes, bears, and britches. Did I forget to say bushes the first time? I can't remember. Whatever. Welcome to another episode of... Yes, can I help you? We're going to start right... We're, we're 20 seconds in. We're going to start now? Okay, well, hold on. So wait, maybe. Huh? Yeah, you ever thought about that? The world's not all about you and getting whatever you want. I built this company. You're going to sit here and demand things from me? I don't think so. Today we're going to be... Oh, welcome to another episode of Crime and Cosmetics. I am your host, Snaxon. Today we're going to be looking at uh, the beast of British Columbia, C Clifford Olsen. Uh, God, words are hard today, apparently. You know, I didn't think splitting my tongue made it hard to talk, but it makes it a little hard to talk now. I guess maybe I just wasn't... Maybe I haven't gotten that used to it, as used to as I think I have. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I colored my hair. So, uh, got the best hairstylist in the game to hook me up, and now we're back to purple. So we're going to do a purple and black look today, and we just look really good in purple and black. Oh my god! Chill out! <clears throat> but I hope you've been having a lovely, lovely week, evening, day, whatever. Whatever time you watch this, it doesn't really matter. I know I, I'm going to work on not saying when I'm going to release these because uh, last time I said like... No, I released it on time. I just finished editing Sunday and was going to release it Sunday, but it was... Alright, okay, fine, fine. Come on, come on, come on. Give me a second. Here. There's for you. Toothless! Come here! Toothless! Oh my god. Are you going deaf? Do we need to get your ears checked? Or I, th I think you're just not paying attention to me. That could definitely be it. Hold on, I need this makeup brush. What are you, what? Is there, oh, you're gonna, I'm gonna lose it, sister. I'm sorry I touched you while you were eating. Go back to your fucking trees. Look, they're right here. They are right here. God, what cats are weird, dude. <sighs> Kids these days, I swear. I'm gonna try some line work I saw on the internet. We'll see how it goes. We will see how it goes. Also, for this episode, I have a friend, Tia. Um, you, hey, you f off. Those are her treats. Get out of here, War Chief, before I send you into the stratosphere. And last time you tried to take treats from Tula, she beat the shit out of you, so you better watch it, sister. And our good friend Tia, her mom, went to church, or her family, you know, went to church with uh, this dude. And her uncle knew one of the people that went missing. It's crazy. So they wrote, I had her, her mom wrote some things like what it was like around the area when kids were disappearing. Um, and I'll read that off a little bit later. But uh, let's get our makeup uh, open and ready. And then we will, we'll do a, um, we'll do a um, mukbang and murder next week. I just had, didn't, I'm not, I wanted to do it this week because I got some MREs I want to try out. Uh, but I told somebody we'd go to dinner. So uh, I'm, Gonna wait on that. Um, but yeah, there's some kind of like line work I want to do, so. Um, okay. You just gonna take that box with you? You go right ahead. You should move that your pile of trash. Okay, like I said, she has a pile of trash by the front door that she just hangs out in because she's built it herself. Like, I didn't put that, like, the bag that's over there, I put over there to like throw away, and then she just started going ham in it, and I was like, all right, cool. But the boxes, she has moved over there herself, um, and she's the trash man. And it's uh, every time I open the door when I come home from work, it'll I'll knock run into her because she's right behind the door and she's just vibing over here right now. So January first, nineteen forty, our uh, main man Clifford Olson is born. Um, if I read somewhere correctly, there was like a contest that a drugstore was having that. Uh, you would win money if you had a baby on, like, exactly New Year's. Um, but his parents didn't get it, and apparently Clifford robbed that same drugstore, like, later in his life. Whatever. But he was born, um, in Vancouver, British Columbia. His dad was a milkman. Um, and he, Clifford, I believe, was the oldest of two, uh, two brothers. He, uh, his parents had, gave him some siblings a little later down the road. Um... You know, when we talk about people like these monsters and we're talking about their childhood, people are usually like, well, you know, he had his ups and downs, but ultimately he was a good kid. Well, not good old Clifford. He was an a-hole right off the jump. When he wasn't torturing cats and dogs, he would go around to people's garden 
gardens and pick the flowers and berries from their gardens. And if you could believe the lion, the witch, and the audacity of this bitch, he would try to sell them back to the people he stole them from. See some little kid mucking around in my garden, you're gonna catch a poison dart to the neck there, son. So Olsen would constantly be getting into fights at school and he would not do well. He would often get beat up. This prompted him to uh, tell his dad, Dad, I want to become a boxer. And, well, that's exactly what he did. Uh, he was actually a pretty good boxer, too. And once he, um, once he got to be a decent boxer, he quickly started making his rounds around school and settling the score with the people that used to bully him. He actually placed runner-up in a bronze glove championship, and then in a golden gloves tournament, he was uh, voted the most sportsmanlike boxer there. Could not have been a more wrong judgment of character, if I do say so myself. But the thing is, with people who are like, like, severe narcissists they are really good at making people like char they're really good at charming people they're really good at making people like them um multiple times through my research did i see that people referred um to clifford as having the gift of the gab meaning he could just he could just charm his way into anybody's good graces he was a real good talker and a lot of so uh narcissists and psychopaths are because they know if they can talk their way out of something and they can manipulate somebody into giving them what they want. So Olsen drops out of school in grade eight. He uh, lives with his parents until he catches a breaking and entering charge when he is 17. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and he is off to juvenile detention center. God, I love this purple. I know we do a lot of purple looks, but I, this deep sea on this uh, See You Later Violet Voss palette is just stunning. So like I said, Olsen, at the very truest sense of the word, was a con man. He had a silver tongue. He could talk his way out of anything. Um, he successfully escaped and incarcerated, escaped it. He successfully escaped car incarceration like seven times. He broke out of jail multiple times because he was able to talk his way out of things and convince people, you know, he was someone he wasn't. Um, but one thing Olsen had a rivalry with were police dogs because he was caught by police dogs like three times. Uh, there was a, an event where he was literally just laying down, um, laying down in some bushes as correction officers and police walked past him multiple times to search the area for him uh, and they never found him but as soon as they broke out that police dog he was done i think at one point when he was in prison he put a little bit of blood in the urinal which earned him a trip to the hospital and once he was at that hospital he quickly made his escape uh over the next course of 25 years olsen spent all but four of them in prison Olsen's dumbass even got thrown into prison again one time because the penitentiary he had done time at was going to close in 1981. So he was like, oh, I'm feeling a bit sentimental. Let me go, um, let me go visit this and, you know, see my old stomping grounds where I used to sleep in my cell and what have you. So he goes and visits his old, uh, penitentiary. Uh, he goes and looks in the cell that he used to stay out, you know, thinking about the good times. And then a prison guard looks at him and is like, I know who you are. And he's like, what? And then the prison guard looks like, is like, you know, you have warrants out for your arrest that are like Canada wide. You're, you, you know that, right? And Olsen's like, I have no idea what you're talking about, champ. Uh, this is not the actual conversation, by the way. I don't know how it went, but essentially this prison guard recognizes him, calls the authorities, and Olsen is arrested with the group. Arrested in front of this group of tourists he came in with um, and spent another, I think, six or seven months behind bars. Big, stupid dummy. So as time goes on, Olsen ends up back at his old stomping grounds where he grew up. He marries a Joanne ha uh, Hale, H-A-L-E, um, on May 5th of 1981 and not and about a month later she gives birth to Olsen's son and just like your typical Narcissist Olsen was well liked in his community. Uh, he was very kind to the children um, You know uh, at one point a girl went missing. I don't I'm not hundred percent sure if it was a girl He was responsible for making go missing, but he drove around town late at night looking for this that and the other he would often bring toys to the kids in the area because a lot of them didn't have new things. Um, he was always scamming people to get money and he would you know, bring them candy, this, that, and the other. 
Uh, he was a church-going family man. Like one of the articles I read stated he was wearing out a pew in church because he was always there. He was always doing something with the church. Um, he was well, well educated on the Bible. Um, knew it front to cover, or that's the same thing, front to back, cover to back, whatever, you get what I'm saying. And like I said, my friend uh, said that her, uh, I think her grandmother took care of Olson's son while they were in, in the nursery at church. Like, they went to church with him and stuff. It's insane. But like I said, you know, they're having the time of their life. Um, his him and his wife get married they're having this great you know family family dynamic but little did they know by the time Olsen and his wife had gotten married he had already claimed the lives of three children so November 17th 1980 Olsen takes the life of Christine uh, 12 year old Christine Weller now police at first did not take this as like a disappearance situation. They really didn't take it seriously. They treated it as kind of like a runaway. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. Just kidding. I don't know about you, but when a 12 year old doesn't come home and their home life isn't that, you know, there's not, not something they would run away from. That seems a little sp suspicious, but then again, uh, this was in the eighties. So that kind of is on brand. I think people are fighting across the street. Let me check. They were fighting, dude. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I have no clue. But like my apartment complex, um, my apartment complex is like super quiet, super chill. Like there's no nobody ever. Like the the loudest thing I've ever heard here is my neighbors upstairs walking around and like laughing and having it singing, having a good time. But literally just like across the fence, like if you look out on my balcony, there's like uh, the parking lot, there's a fence and another complex. There's always something going down there. I don't know why. But like, it'll be three o'clock in the morning and I just hear people like yelling slur, like the F slur and this, that and the other and getting into fist fights. And I'm just like, what? what's, it? but it never crosses the fence. It never comes over this way. And I'm just like, what's happening? I, there was one time though, I was here chilling. Mm. Mini story time. I was here doing something and I kept hearing this lady screaming and like crying, like screaming, like help me, help me, help me. And I was like, what the fuck? Um, and I look out uh, my balcony and there's like, she's on her balcony and there's, there's two guys standing next to her. She's like screaming like, get out, get out, like get out of my house, blah, 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 blah. And they're just like not leaving. And so she finally leaves and she walks over to our apartment complex. Um, and she's like walking through the, uh, walking through the um, parking lot across, in front of my building, like crying, like somebody help me, somebody call the police. They won't get out of my house, this, that, and the other. So I was like, damn, like, you know, she didn't have a cell phone, I guess. And I was like, I don't really like calling the cops. Like, I don't like the police being around here. But I was like, you know what? Like, she needs help. I'm not about to go, like, fight two guys for some lady I don't know. So I just called the police. And then, I don't know, man. It was weird. Uh, then the police tried to come and talk to me. They're like, yeah, we're going to come up to your apartment and talk to you. And I was like, no, you're going to meet me out front. You're not coming anywhere near my apartment. Uh, but, yeah, it's always something over there. It's crazy. Um, but thankfully, that lady got her apartment back from those two guys. Um, but anywho, so let's get back to our story. But like I said, police didn't really take her disappearance as like, uh, as a, as anything malicious. They thought she was a runaway, but her body was found on Christmas day and it showed, it had multiple stab wounds and showed signs of strangulation. So after that, police were like, Ooh, oh, you know, you really screwed the pooch on that one, didn't you, bud? Um, April 16th, 1981, 13-year-old Colleen uh, Dognault is abducted and murdered by Olsen. Her body is uh, discovered five months later. I'm looking at, I want to do like a white up and across, but I think I might do that with liquid liner just because. How do, so, okay. Quick question for all my makeup friends out there. I see people do these super crazy, like, detailed looks that like, ugh, I'll try to find a picture and post it, but how do they do that? I've heard people like you, you kind of get your makeup brush a little wet and then apply it like that, but is, is, is that, is that correct? Do I need to do that? I don't know. 
So on April 22nd, 15-year-old uh, Darian Johnsrud is abducted by Olsen while uh, he is spending time at a local shopping mall. Uh, he had only been in the Vancouver area for two days, and he his body was discovered less than two weeks later uh, and had been very badly beaten. May 19th, only four days after his wedding, Olstein picks up a 16-year-old Sandra Wolfsteiner, who is hitching a ride back from her boyfriend's house, and takes her to a nearby wooded area and takes her life. You know, these poor kids being you know, putting trust in somebody and then being uh, sexually assaulted and murdered. Like, Olsen was a real fucking monster. So Olsen continues to go about this whole, I'm an upstanding member of society, you know, despite being arrested like 90 times. Oh, what? You already got treats. Um, and being this good, honest, going church man. Well, he would... Um, go on to claim the lives of eight more children, uh, six of those lives being taken just in the month of July. So June 21st, 13-year-old Ada Court disappears uh, while on her way to see a friend, uh, and her body is found two months later. So July 2nd, nine-year-old Simon Parrington is abducted by uh, the waste of space known as Olsen while on his way to riding his bike to a friend's house. Now police had classified these other disappearances as runaways, but when it came to Simon, they actually admitted that there might, you know, it seems to have been foul play. So July 9th, 14 year old Judy Kozma, Kozma, sorry if I mispronounced that, is abducted by this monster. He pried her to get into his vehicle. He gave her alcohol as well as, um, chloral hydrate and then he abuses and murders her and that was one thing Olsen did to get kids into his vehicle um, he would you know be like oh you know I'll, let's go drinking this that and the other blah 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 and he would give them chloral hydrate and when that's mixed with alcohol it causes you know them to become disoriented confused um, you know it's it's a sedative so and then he was able to do whatever he wanted to them and then the very next day, he after he murdered Judy, he goes on a nice, long, happy vacation with his family. What a piece of shit. So July 23rd, 15-year-old Raymond King is coerced into Olsen's vehicle with the promise of work. Uh, he picked him up from an employment center. Uh, like I said, one of... Olsen's way of getting these kids trust and like I said he was a con man he would tell people he had a construction firm he had these really nice business cards made up for it and everything like that but it never existed but he would tell young boys oh yeah I'll give you some work blah 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 let's go check out the construction site so we'll see where you're working uh, and he would take them to a remote area and you know sexually abuse them and then murder them that was what happened to Raymond King uh, he brutally beats Olsen brutally beats Raymond and then dumps his body at a nearby remote camping ground. You know what? I feel like I should be wearing my purple striped shirt for this. So let me go put that on. I feel like it would really complete this whole thing. So on July 25th, 14 year old Sigrun Arndt, he is a student visiting Canada from Germany. He is abducted and murdered by Olsen. This is also the day that Judy Kozma's body is found, and when all of this stuff came to light, police didn't even know that Seagrun was missing. They did, they had no clue, which is a terrifying thought, because if they, you know, if they never got confessions out of Olsen, Seagrun's parents would never know that he was murdered. They would never know what happened to their child. On July 27th, 15-year-old uh, Terry Lynn Carson is abducted and strangled by that a-hole and left in a wooded area near the Fraser River. So on July 30th, 17-year-old Louise Chartrand, who is the last of Olsen's victims, um, is abducted by Olsen. She's taken to an area near Whistler, British Columbia Ski Resort, um, and there she is murdered and buried in a shallow grave. Olsen was a monster in the truest sense of the word. He would sometimes conduct experiments on these children uh, that he abducted. I couldn't figure out if it was uh, before or after they had passed. I think one child, he drove a three-inch uh, spike into 
the child's skull. Another one he injected with an air embolism, embolism, I can't, I'm not sure what the correct pronunciation is, but basically it's a blockage, blockage of the blood vessel via an air bubble or, or another gas bubble. He was, a he was a cowardice pedophile and a psychopath at the truest sense of the word. Olsen actually scored a 35 out of uh, 40 on the uh, sci uh, Psychopathy Checklist Revive, which was created by psychologist Robert Hare, um, to put those test scores into perspective, the average inmate who takes this test scores around a 23 or a 22 to 24, uh, and 30 is the cutoff to determine if someone is a psychopath. Olsen's scores to this day, if I read correctly, are still one among the highest uh, that's ever been received on this test. He also fantasized about being famous under the name uh, Silver Hammer Man after the Beatles song. It's always just, it, it's, it's absolutely baffling to me that somebody can be that, uh, that cruel to, to children nonetheless. Like, it, it just, it, it makes zero sense to me. So on August 12th, Olsen is um, arrested while in the company of two female hitchhikers. Now, police had been surveillancing Olsen on and off. Uh, he was actually an informant when he was in prison. Uh, he actually got a confession out of another inmate for murdering and sexually abusing a nine-year-old. Uh, Olsen got the confession out of him and then testified against him in court. So police already knew who he was and he had spent a long time in the justice system. So they kind of had their suspicions that he might be behind this string of disappearances. And when he picked up these two female hitchhikers, police were like, oh, okay, yeah, we got to stop that. So they pull him over and they detain him. They search his vehicle. When they search his vehicle, they find an address book that had Judy Kozma's name in it. And they're like, oh, okay, this is really suspicious. We're going to need you to come down to the old station. And he gets arrested. Six days later, he is charged with her murder. And this is about where the shit show begins. So Olsen, being the self-centered, narcissistic piece of shit that he is, uh, once he's been charged with this, he starts looking for ways to make his life and his family's lives a little bit easier. And he has no remorse for what he's done. So he proposes to detectives a cash for bodies deal where he will give them the whereabouts names and locations of all or the 11 victims and return he gets around a hundred thousand dollars that is to be paid out to his wife and son so police at first was like uh yeah i don't know about all that one chief you know we pay informants but paying the criminal and also how do we know that you're going to give us factual information uh instead of just taking our money and and shutting up so olsen's like oh don't worry uh, I'll give you a freebie and something about him referring to the victims as a fr uh, one of the victims as a freebie um, just shows how little remorse he had and how much of a POS he actually was. So Olsen gives police the information uh, and location of one of the victims. Um, you know, it's also I read that Olsen knew all of the victims first and last names, what they were wearing the day he uh, took their lives uh, every little detail about what he did uh, which is just terrifyingly creepy because a lot of people you know serial killer stuff like that they'll disconnect themselves from what they're doing but he was all about it I guess but anyways he gives the this information to police it proves to be fruitful he's not giving them the run around the uh, run around he's not giving them the runaround and so they start working out this deal. So Attorney General at the time, Alan Williams, was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Uh, he was making what most considered a deal with the devil. And if he did not make this deal though, there was a possibility that Olsen could be released back onto the streets because the lack of evidence they had uh, in the charges against him for murdering Judy Kozma. So it was either give this serial killer a hundred thousand dollars or risk him being released uh due to lack of evidence and going to murder more people you're kind of damned if you do damned if you don't there at the end of the day though williams didn't did agree to this deal because it was a sure fire way to get um to get olsen hit with first degree murder and not be released back into the public so during these negotiation, negotiations and what have you, Olsen is acting like he's a celebrity. He's smoking cigars with his lawyers, uh, just strutting around like he owns the place. He even tells his wife, 
What can I say, honey? I did it. It was the booze and the pills. I've never wanted someone to die a more painful death than this man. So at the end, Olsen arranges for this money to some of it be given to his parents, uh, some of it to pay for his legal fees, and then the, you know, the rest given to um, his wife and son. And while they were prepping for all this to get taken care of, he, you know, suggested to his lawyer that they should write a book about him called a book about him you know leaving his son and leaving all this money for him called kiss daddy goodbye like fuck you dude like you th you it just shows that he thinks like he's doing some great thing you know yeah cool thanks for telling police where the bodies are but maybe you shouldn't have murdered them in the first place you I'm gonna stop while i'm ahead and i've cussed too much already uh you get what i'm saying though so at the end of the all at the end of it all, sorry, Olsen really receives uh, a life sentence for the 11 murders. The judge, uh, during his hearing, saying, You should never be granted parole for the main remainder of your days. It would be foolhardy to let you at large. Uh, while Olsen is being driven to the penitentiary after receiving his sentence, he tells one of the uh, correction officers that are escorting him that he, if he were ever released, um, he will pick up back up, he will pick up right where he left off. So of course, he tries to appeal uh, his sentencing multiple times because what else is he gonna do? They all get shot down. Um, they all get uh, denied, thank the Lord. And he also made some like super bizarre claims and lawsuits and everything. He said that the U.S. provided him clemency for giving information pertaining to the 9-11's attacks, so he should be released. He also stated that being denied plexiglass installed in a cell to protect him from other inmates, as well as his request for a quote-unquote solid pleasure life-size revolutionary non-inflated sex doll was cruel and unusual, unusual punishment because he needed those things. And finally, on September 30th, 2011, Mr. Olson dies of cancer in prison. Good riddance, bitch. So like I said, my a friend of mine's mom and was around the area at the time, uh, and her uncle knew one of the boys that passed away, but she had her mom write some stuff down. You know, uh, she asked how old her mom was at the time, you know, 11 or 12, she was living in Surrey. Uh, she asked, what was it like when kids started to go missing? Um, she said that, you know, you were told to stay in groups. Um, you had to ride directly home uh, when you got out of school. You would also call your parents when you got home from school. She also writes that Simon apparently went missing during summer break. Uh, you know, the nine-year-old we talked about earlier. And her uncle knew Simon, um, her mom's brother and the school was just really quiet about it. They also attended the People's Four Gospel Church, which was, which was the same church that Olsen and his wife, I believe, got married in and also attended on a regular basis, and that her grandma took care of Olsen's son, I think his name was Stephen, in the nursery of the church. They weren't allowed to, the kids weren't allowed to go alone, go anywhere alone at night. She says that, you know, the parents kept the kids in the dark about most of it, uh, but they kind of just uh, hammered into them stranger danger. They were allowed to roam and go wherever they wanted to. It was the 80s, you know. But they had to call and give their parents specific details of like, this is where I am, this is who I'm with, this is what we're doing, this is the clothes we have on, blah, 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 blah. Um, and basically give this entire report of who, where, where and who they were with so in case something happens, they have details they can give to police. Um, when Simon went missing, it was on the news, but the, the, her mom writes that she was kept in the dark about it because, you know, they're kids, um, you know, about this, almost the same age as Simon. When Simon was nine, I think her mom was 11 or 12 when this happened, and that's a terrifying thought. A kid around your age goes missing, you know, it could be you. Uh, but like I said, Stranger, Dangers was, Stranger Danger was drilled into their brains. Uh, never getting into the car with a stranger. Don't go up to strange cars or talk to anybody you don't know. Um, what a terrifying time that would have been too. Just being a kid when that when that is happening, uh, especially in like your area, like close to you. It's that's can't imagine. You know, you could be kept in the dark for. You know, your parents can keep you in the dark for however long, but at some point, you know, kids pick up on things. But that is the beast of British Columbia, Clifford Olson. 
uh, may he rot in hell. I'm going to finish this look up a little bit, uh, put a, even this stuff out and put some lines, and we'll pick our crime for next week. All right, I think we're going to leave it at that. I wanted to do some really, really cool designs with the white and stuff like that, but my hands just will not stop shaking today, and I don't know why, and it's very, very frustrating, and I hope it doesn't get worse. Um, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, it's very hard to do things when they're doing that. Um, but let's go ahead and pick our crime for next week. We'll uh, back it up just a little bit. That's perfect. All right. Oh, who are we gonna cover? Throwing some of your suggestions in here as well, so keep leaving them in the comments of this video, and we will keep putting them in. Um, all right. That, oh, this is two of them. Alyssa Turney. But yeah, that's the case we're covering. I think I remember this one. Wasn't this a big TikTok thing too? Um, so that, oh, that's going to be interesting. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We love the purple. Uh, purple is just our color, friends. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in. The, please leave them in the comments of this video, and I will place them in the murder pot. If you you can join our coven, which is our Discord server, uh, I will leave that link in the description of this video as well. And I will also link all my other social medias. We we're about to play Dungeons and Dragons on Twitch, stuff like that. It's going to be a grand old time. Uh, come stop by, play video games with us. We've been playing a lot of cowboy games recently. Uh, but I need to go get coffee before we play some Dungeons and Dragons. So I will see you next week. Be safe. Be kind to others. Be kind to yourself. I love you so much. Remember that you are loved. You are valid. You are cherished. Your life is precious. And there is always a place for you here in this community. And we will always be here to listen to you. Love you so much. Bye-bye.